Hello, and welcome to episode number 88 of the Friday Nightmares podcast. I am one half your host this evening, coming to you from the town of Swartz Creek in the county of Genesee, in the state of Michigan, in the United States of America, in the North American continent, in the Western Hemisphere, on the planet Earth, in the Milky Way galaxy. Oh, I'm fully vaxxed boosted and waxed and ready to climax and if you can please get me wet and feed me after midnight i'm the man with the glorious beard aka mother of cats aka the man with the humongous <clears throat> ego aka scott Housen, aka scotty too hottie aka spanky A.K.A. your new reigning champ from Dummies of Wrestling. Bullet Club Old is back on the menu, baby. The Bang Bang Gang is back. I am Smoke Show Crawford. And with me, as always, is... Heather Powell, coming to you today from Waterdown, Ontario, Canada. I'm also vaccinated with lots of different vaccines because I'm... (laughs) Pro vaccinated. I also have a big ego, and I don't know. I get slut shamed a lot by Matt Woods, so I'm sex positive. But Matt slut shames me all the time. Uh-huh. Excuse me, that's sexy Matt Wood. Yeah, I honestly. So I found out Matt's a virgin. Um, oh. yeah. Don't tell his wife. She's probably wondering <laughs> why it's it's been like twenty years. She's like, really? What are you waiting for? He's like, I'm just waiting for the right moment. Um. I'm just coming off this fresh because, like, our episodes are released two years later. Um, Scott's <laughs> aiming for this to be a vintage podcast. So when you listen to the hot 2023s, people are going to listen to it and be like, wow, it's 2025. Like, wow, it's so vintage. They're well, going you know, back Heather, in time. <laughs> you know, Heather, what I'm actually doing is I'm creating a history podcast because <laughs> what we're talking about is so far in the past now, people can kind of dig up these episodes and be like, Oh, that's what it was like back then. <laughs> like, like it was so funny. One of our good friends, Rob Humphreys, messaged a group chat and said, you're just talking about Heather's album now. Did that happen in 1984? <laughs> and it made me laugh pretty fucking hard. Um, but I'm no one to talk. I didn't even know you won the championship. I've been so out of it because I've been away. I was in a wedding. I came back and was sick. Probably had COVID, by the way. I probably had, though, UK COVID. You know, it's a little different. Yeah, 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 you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, you know what I God mean? God damn it. Right? So, My like, camera's I, not on, so she can't see me. Just get up and walk I know, away right now. I can't see him pouting. Um, But, so, like, I didn't even know that you won until you wrote in the chat. Honestly, like, I had no fucking idea. So, congratulations. Oh, thank you. On, yeah, I, On being the champion. <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> I, no I was, like... I think I was like four points ahead of Tim, and Tim was the uh, Tim and I were battling it out, so I got four points more than him. Well, you know, it's it's sometimes you gotta let the underdog win, it just to keep ratings up, right? Like that's really what it comes I, down to. I mean, I'm sure it's just gonna be a hot potato with the belt, and I'll probably lose it again here very shortly, but still. Ah, you know, you're just a temporary champ. You're right. You're just like a pandemic champ champ that's all you are scott <laughs> like you're not a real champ i didn't even watch AEW last night yes this is a horror podcast everybody that's listening but we when you're a horror nerd you happen to also be wrestling nerds and i haven't i didn't watch AEW. i didn't watch it when i was away i think i watched the week i got back um but yeah i'm really behind i have to get caught up on everything because all i've been doing is watching fucking 2023 fucking horror movies yeah, to, like a to fucking catch up to boss me. Like, honestly you, had, you actually had to catch up to me for once i know for once finally finally the uh the apprentice has taken its his final lead so for everyone listening to this episode in 2025 um these were some great 2023s that we watched <laughs> <laughs> hope you enjoy them we gotta get right to it because we got fucking like 23 movies to talk about I know, um, but we don't honestly, have an out of the dark this time, right? No, fuck no. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. And remember, remember we used to do movies and we would like dissect them and stuff and we thought we were really smart. No, we got yeah. rid of that. <laughs> that ain't happening anymore. No, no. This is like a steady relationship. We're committed now. We're not trying. OK, we're fucking with our shirts on. And for all of you in committed relationships, <laughs> you know exactly what I mean by that. We even leave our socks on because our toesies are getting cold. It's getting to that time of year, um, except for Matt Wood. 
I bet you Matt's so hot he doesn't even have, well, he hasn't lost his virginity yet, but I'm sure when he does, he'll be in the full nude. Uh, Matt, as... all I ask is, can I be in the running? See, I don't understand. Why don't you slut shame him? Why don't you shut slut shame Scott? He wants to fuck pumpkins and shit, but no. I didn't say anything about fucking a pumpkin. I said shoving a pumpkin up my ass. Yeah, it's but last different. episode you did, you talked about fucking a pumpkin in front of Erica. You you were, and like, then oh, Matt, yeah. then Matt slut shames me, Matt. <laughs> You forget that I'm the one that goes to the fucking UK, Matt. But Be you careful. also forget that I'm the smoke show. That's true. No one makes fun of you. You can do no wrong. We could literally say the same thing, and they'd be like, oh, Scotty, and they'd be like, that Heather. <laughs> that, that Heather. Well, that bitch. <laughs> bitch. No, Tim doesn't call me that anymore because we're besties. And now it's I stand that by Scott my Scott Crawford. <laughs> yeah, I stand by my NWO leader for good or bad or indifferent. I'm in Tim's quarter, corner. Like, I am a true Tim fan. I am a whore for dummies Patreon. I am. Uh, I have bought merch from their website. Oh, sorry, Dummies of Horror. Uh, the old shit said Horror for Dummies, so we'll go with that. I am wow, a Dummies see, of Horror Patreon. You're so supportive, Patreon. you don't even know the right name. At least I bought stickers. What? Or, and I'm a Patreon. What have you done lately, Scott? Huh? Sent nudes. <laughs> you're like, look, when I and, don't give him money, I give him dick pics. <laughs> and, and correct him when he's wrong about a movie. <laughs> Honestly... <laughs> it, like I just listened to their episode, so we're talking about dummies of horror, and like they're like the two cutest. Like I'm like, who are these two hot nerds debating between Jason and Michael Myers? Who are these hotties? Oh, so you're playing like, catch I, up? Oh yeah, like I'm playing catch up on everything in my life minus 2023 horror films because that's how dedicated I am to my craft. You know, you are, you are a true podcaster. <laughs> I don't live spooky season. From October 1st to October 31st. I live spooky season 12 months a year. All the, the time. Only, every the only day. Difference, the only difference I have during this time of year is when I watch my 2023s, I shove the pumpkin stem right up my ass <laughs> and I spin around At a few first. times while I'm watching the movie. You like spin like a spinny top, right? You're like, wee! <laughs> and Erica's like, is it too late to move out? <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, yes, yes, it is. <laughs> As you're spinning, right? Honestly, <laughs> that'd be a great kill for a horror film, wouldn't it? Oh, like a, oh. a pumpkin up the bum bum. I swear I've seen that somewhere. <laughs> oh, it's got to have been done. Well, is that in a porn you watched or is it Maybe like a. It might have been. Uh, a porn, like a weird pump... shit. I'm not like, hey, Heather probably wants to stick a pumpkin up her pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry that I'm sex positive, Matt Wood. You know, it's funny. I was watching Scream 6 on the plane back from my trip. Um, no, sorry. But yeah, on the way back. Because, because like, there wasn't a lot on there. And I just wanted to throw on something. By the way, it goes down a lot on rewatch. Scream 6, not that great. Aww. But there's a part where the chick's like, so someone slut shames one of the characters. And she's like, sex positive. I'm like, that's who I am, Matt Wood. Sex positive. <laughs> So I'm getting my positive reinforcement from a shitty sequel. Um, uh, sounds about right, right? Oh, I love it. Actually, I showed my friend. Also, I'll tell you this quickly. So I showed my friend in England. His name's Mark. He listens. Shout out, Mark. Thanks for supporting the podcast. Um, the Camp Crystal Lake's memoirs. And he loved it. The six-hour doc. he never seen that? No. No, he wow. hadn't seen it before. He just had the shuddy. So he... But it's long. It's six hours. I yeah. forgot that it was six hours and 40 minutes, right? So we watched it over a series of days, and he really, really dug it. I was like, that is was probably one of like that is one of the best documentaries out there, Like, if you are yeah. a fan of the franchise. When I was out there in January, I showed him the Four Core one, which he really enjoyed. I still um, need to and see I, that. It's a good one, and I want to try to show him Never Sleep Again, the uh, oh, yeah. Freddy Krueger one. Yeah. Also, what I'm going to do to Matt, um, so he won't be able to sleep <laughs> when I'm there. So... But uh, yeah, that was kind of cool. And then he showed me a 1973 classic that we'll get to later. Ooh. Yes, he's always good for the older watches. Oh, so he's sure. written books. He's written. Well, I promoted them before. He's the author of the Cursed Horror Stars, where he writes about like, oh my gosh, he's going to be listening to this. And Heather, why didn't you remember the course the fucking Cursed Horror Stars that are in there? Bella Ghost, he's one of them. Um, but he wrote that book, and then he wrote the Vincent Vincent Price book as well. I'll share it later. Um, on our page so he's watched a lot of older films 
And he's kind of like, I don't want to say an expert in older films, but definitely more than I am. Right. So he's seen all the Hammer films. He's seen, you know, all the ones with Vincent Price, all the ones with Bella Lugosi. Like he's seen Lonnie Chaney Jr., like all that stuff. He's watched all that. Um, the guy that played Sherlock Holmes, he was in Basil Rothborn. Not Basil oh, yeah, Basil Rothborn. Yes. Um, so like all those guys, right? So he's seen a lot of this stuff. So he always pushes me to watch older stuff. Because I tend, as you know, I tend to shy away from it. Right. Um, but he got me to, to watch a 1973 classic when I was there, considered a cult classic. But I'm, I'm glad I finally saw the original because I actually have seen the remake. And now I can say that I've seen the original. So thanks, Mark. And it's um, kind of a surprise to me because the screen share that you're sharing isn't showing it right now. So, ah, it's going to be a surprise. <laughs> surprise! You know what's worse? I can't see what the screen share looks like that I'm sharing right now. Oh, yes, ah. I can. Wait, hold on. Now I can. Hold Fuck up. This guy. Hold up. Hey. Um, yeah, check out Mark Iverson's book. I should look it up. Cursed Horror Stars is one of them. And now I got to look up the name of his actual book other book because i'm panicking with the name of it here it is here i know it's about vincent price and he's going to be so mad at me ah vincent price the british connection there we go nice. so vincent price the british connection british connection and cursed horror stars i like cursed horror stars because i like the kind of anthology field of it but anyway right. there you go mark free plug for you and he's writing the third book now too so anyway nice. away from my uk friends oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. not that way <laughs> Matt, Matt's not a friend. He's a shamer. Oh, a Matt shamer. is a friend of our show, and you know it. No, he bullies me. He's so mean to me. You love it, and you know it. I do. I love his fluffy bum bum. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I love him. And Kate. All right, let's get to these fucking movies, huh? I watched this one on the last night that I was in the UK. I wasn't feeling good, and I had a hard time sleeping, so I put this on my laptop. So uh, you watched this bad boy, didn't you? Oh, of course. I was the one that told you to watch it. Oh, no, you bring it in then, because I think you liked it more than I did. I definitely did. All right, let me pull it up. Where it is? There it is. All right. So the first movie on our list is VHS 85, uh, right off the shutty. Unveiled through a made-for-TV documentary, five chilling tales of found footage horror emerged to take viewers on a gore-filled journey through the grim underbelly of the forgotten 1980s. Mm -hmm. yep, so this is, I think, the sixth film in the VHS franchise now. I don't know. They keep making them. I feel like yep. it's a never-ending story of VHS films. <laughs> But I, all I got to say is I, I love anthologies, so they can continue to make these all they want. Cause, You're like all like, night long. Yep, I'm all about it. Like, even if they're not the greatest, I still, like, don't hate my time with them. Um, but, yeah, uh, this one uh, has some really uh, interesting stories. Uh, it's got uh, one by Scott Derrickson, one by David Bruckner, Mike P. Nelson, Gigi Saul Guerrero. And Natasha Kermani. Or Natasha Kermani. Uh, it's got a 110-minute runtime. And, yeah. Exclusive on Shutter, I believe. But yeah, I I like this one. I had like especially um the first story I was really freaking hooked. Uh that one had me very invested and intrigued. And honestly, I'm kind of with Brandon Orlick in this where there was only one story. I'm not even gonna say the name of it, don't want to spoil anything, that I was not a fan of, but thankfully it was not a very long one. Um the only thing I'm kind of not a fan of of these newer vhs movies is how it's like they're splicing over top of like video like commercials and yes stuff like, that. And like thank you it start uh. sometimes it gets a little bit too much i can get it once in a while but eh, that, i could care less if that was still in the next couple of them they could just get rid of that and i'd be happy but other than that like i thought this was a pretty solid entry in the franchise I don't think it was the worst. I don't think it was the best. I think the cutting over commercials is really getting old to me. Uh, there's a there's a movie that was an anthology kind of thing, or no, it's a found footage on Halloween night that's told like a newscast. What's that oh, yeah, fucking uh, one called? WNUF Halloween special. Like I felt like they did it well, and I, now I feel yes. like everyone rips that concept off. And I. <laughs> There was a couple stories I enjoyed in this, but I would say if you like the VHS movies generally, you'll like this one. Um, it's kind of going back to more of the feels of the the original two in the sense of the stories. Uh, I, I think that is something that people will like a lot. 
And I and I like that they did pull from the 80s. There was one story that did really stand out to me and a little bit of a tie-in with another one that I enjoyed. And, you know, out of all the stuff that's come out this year, I think this is probably the better anthology, let's be realistic. Right? Yeah, <laughs> Not a lot of competition, but it's yeah, probably Yeah, I, I think it's the best anthology we got so far. Yeah, I think that's a pretty fair statement with the uh, lackluster year it's been. Uh, you can find this bad boy on Shudder, all the Shuddies, AMC Plus, uh, all of the AMC Plus Amazon channels, because they're all the streaming services are in bed together. Unlike Matt Wood and I, who <laughs> can't go to bed together because he's a virgin. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, check it out. If you got the shutter and you liked VHS and you like anthologies, I would say give it a shout. Shout. Give it a shot. Shout. Shout, uh, shout it as well while you're watching it. You know, whatever you want to do. Shout. Kick my heels up and shout. <laughs> Come on now, shout. <laughs> Would you agree, Scotty? Yeah, absolutely. Like, I think this right. is definitely one of the better Shutter pickups that we've gotten in a while. All right. Well, the next film is how Scott feels every time I ask him when he's going to release an episode. It's called Nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is also on Shuddy right now. It's a 100-minute runtime. The tagline is, are you awake? No. A woman is put. <laughs> I'm waking up! Imagination Dragon starts playing. <laughs> A woman is plagued by constant nightmares after Wake moving into a large, time. suspicious <laughs> brain. Is this MS is playing on repeat? For some people, that would be a nightmare. Right. Um, a woman is plagued by constant nightmares after moving into a large, suspiciously cheap apartment. It's never a good sign, people. When <laughs> yeah, you no move shit. into like a fucking huge apartment, they're like, five bucks only. Five bucks only. It's probably something's wrong. Um, yeah. The apartment's the apartment's terrible it's secret bad. soon <laughs> reveals itself through her dreams. Um, I liked this film. Let's see. Did Matt Wood like it? No, no, he hasn't watched it yet. Tim Davis only gave it two stars. Eh, that's fair, Tim. I get you. Um, I I thought it was relatively enjoyable. I think the main characters in, in here is, is likable. I think it, it deals with sleep paralysis, which I don't have. Do you Have you ever had that? I have not, thankfully. Okay, so I'm sure for those that have it, it's probably quite stressful. Um, and I guess the inability to control your dreams or whatever the case may be, um, it it does feel like it's 100-minute runtime. It is, it is a, a long film. It is subtitled. I feel like it's Norwegian. It's a very Norwegian film. I feel like, <laughs> I don't know, I feel like when we watch Norwegian films or, you know, I think because I think... Um, was Don't Speak Norwegian as well? Or was that... Do you remember? I don't even remember that movie. No, the one in the van. I thought it was Don't Speak. Oh, uh, wasn't that like See No Evil or something like that? Oh, maybe it's you know, the one where the family meets up with the yeah, other family. That was a Dutch family. So it was a Dutch film. Oh, it was a Dutch. Okay. Um, yeah, like I feel like certain films are just dark from specific countries, and this is also pretty dark. I think if you like the whole, you know nightmare not being able to co control your dreams and evil spirits or demons and shit i think you'll dig this film it is subtitled it has a 3.0 rating on letterbox i probably would give it a little bit higher than tim maybe three out of five stars it's only available on the shuddy so if you have the shuddy and this sounds like something that you would enjoy check it out it's called nightmare Nice. Yeah, this is one I was kind of curious about because I did see uh, Tim Walker, I believe, posted about it today and sounded like he really enjoyed it. So I was kind of curious about it. Yeah, those are my thoughts. I think if you like demons slash nightmare slash sleep paralysis slash movies, then go for it. Um, and okay. slash subtitle. It is subtitled. So. All right. Oh, well, I guess I will jump on to the next one. Um, this one. Have you seen this one? No, I haven't. All right. So the next one is called <clears throat> Till Death Do Us Part, with a runtime of 109 minutes. After bailing on her wedding, a former bride-to-be must fight off her ex-groom and seven angry killer groomsmen in order to survive the night. <laughs> For real? Um, yes. And uh, basically, <clears throat> excuse me, if you are a fan of Ready or Not uh, mixed with Kill Bill, check this movie out. It is way more action, very uh, uh, very well choreographed with the fights and all that stuff, but holy crap, is it bloody and brutal. And, like, this woman, I forget her name. Oh, let's see. Yeah, I'm watching the trailer right now. So she just, like, fucking peace at the wedding? 
Yep. Why? Uh, there's reason. Okay. You can't tell I don't want to spoil it. But uh, her name is Natalie Byrne. She does such a great job and is such a kick-ass character. And you're, like, rooting for her, like, yes, girl, fucking do it. Fucking kick ass. Like it's... Oh, I got to watch this. I got to put yeah. this on my watch list. Yep, this is on our good friend's Plex. Um, it had a very short run which, in theater. Which good friend? Um, the one that starts with an N? Uh, that I can't remember. Okay, I'm looking it up right now. I can't believe I missed this. Yep, this was one that Erica and I watched together on like a weekend evening. And yeah, we were just having a lot of fun with this. It is just, it goes by quickly. You know where it's going and where it's what it's leading to, but it's just such an enjoyable ride. How come her bridesmaids don't help her? Oh, because uh, I don't think she had any. Oh, okay. Oh, dear. That sounds crazy. Okay, well, I'm going to definitely watch this. I'm going to look it up on uh, Good Friends Plex. Otherwise, is it VOD? Uh, yes, I believe so. Uh, let me check that real fast. Uh, yep, so it's Amazon, Apple TV, Google Play, Vudu, Amazon Video. Oh, and uh, Erica walked by and just waved and said hi. Cause, uh, oh, she... hey, Erica. She did not see that I didn't have my camera on, so I figured I'd just tell you she said hi. Oh, man, so it looks like I'm totally fucking ignoring her, huh? I'm like, <laughs> sorry, Erica, I'm busy so, looking up movies. So rude, Heather. <laughs> I'm really busy watching this movie that Scott watched. Shit, I gotta watch this shit. This looks great, Scotty. Yeah, you would have a blast with this. I think I gave it like an 8 out of 10. Let me see. Oh, fuck yeah. I gave it a 7.5. Oh, fuck yeah, think, I'm going to watch this for sure. Thinking over it, I think I would bump it up to an 8, because, yeah, it's just a lot of fun. It's just easy, and, yeah, another theater watch that way. Oh, man, awesome. Okay, I guess I should go back to my list now, because we're going to have to move to the next one. Um, Okay, the next one is called All Fun and Games. This is a 76-minute runtime. Evil never plays by the rules. But it dies tonight. <laughs> A group it? of or does it? A group of Salem teens discover a cursed knife that unleashes a demon that forces them to play a gruesome, deadly version of childhood games where there can be no winners, only survivors. Oh, Matt, you gave this two stars. That's a shame. We're gonna play it when I come to England. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, Matt. We're not gonna play it because I don't want to die. So this is a. I liked this movie a lot. I really enjoyed it. Um, I think I enjoyed it more than you did, Scott. Yeah, I think you did. Like, I, I enjoyed it, but, like, I wasn't, like, super high on it. I really liked Asta Butterfield, uh, who played Marcus. I actually found him quite endearing and a very, very good actor. Uh, he actually has some pretty serious acting chops. This is more of, like, the dumber movies that he's been in, though he was also in Choose and Die. Choose, choose or Die, which I don't consider oh, yeah. a good acting chop. But he was in the boy, the boy in the Striped Pajamas, which is, like, a pretty fucking heavy film (laughs) if you know what that that, the film's about so that movie is about a kid that befriends a kid that's in a uh, concentration camp and they sit on opposite sides of the fence of each other oh boy and eventually yes you can imagine what happens to yeah so you know to see him in this film i thought was pretty interesting um i like this a lot I don't know. I like these games. I like the whole urban legend games kind of story. And I thought for what they made of this and the story that was behind it, it was fairly fucking entertaining. I appreciated that it stayed under a 76 minute runtime. Um, I don't think it overstayed its welcome. And, and I had fun with it. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty much right there with you. Cause I think I gave this uh, uh six out of 10. Like I definitely hmm. enjoyed my time with it. Like it was an easy watch. Uh, it was low budget, but it was like low budget done well. And I thought mm-hmm. yeah, the acting, the story was, I wouldn't say the acting was great, but I thought the acting was good. The story was uh, good. Like it wasn't, well, so it wasn't great, but just all around like an enjoying, enjoyable little independent horror film. And it got to the point, you know what I mean? Like it didn't yeah. fucking drag it out. Like it got yeah, it to the point. Time. And I appreciated that. Like it didn't try to be something it wasn't. So thank you, film, for knowing what you were and not trying to be something that you weren't. Um, right. If you like action, play act, you know, <clears throat> I think it was better than the elevator game. Um, yeah, I will definitely say that. Yes. So if you like urban ledger legend game horror, then you can check this bad boy out. I think it's worth any rental you'll pay. It is available on Apple TV, Google Play, Vudu, Amazon Video, and YouTube for a rental. Nice. Did yep. you watch this next one? Uh, the next two I did not watch. Mm, well, here I come in with the heavy hitting. Oh, shit. Don't look away. This is an 83-minute runtime. 
It doesn't breathe. It doesn't move. It just kills. <laughs> oh, man. After a gang of criminals unintentionally unleash a supernatural force into the world, a young woman named Frankie is convinced she's being stalked by a killer mannequin. Yes, I said killer mannequin. Frankie soon realizes that her and her friends are in jeopardy, too. She must find the man who holds the key to stopping the killings, but Frankie knows that once you see the mannequin, there may no be no end in sight except for your own. Um... So this is exactly what it sounds. It's about a killer mannequin. Now, the mannequin never comes to life, and there's no, like, ultra cheesy shit like that that happens. So that's good. Um, it's it's basically almost like a... it follows them without actually moving. Yes. Yes. It's just kind of always there. Um, there's some pretty cool scenes that are set up and some pretty interesting scenes that happen i do think this movie could have been a little bit shorter maybe a 60 minute to 65 minute film would have been fine um it was an interesting concept though i think the concept behind this one is really cool i i think some of the dramatic over the top acting took away from it but i think the concept of this killer item just being present and once you see it being cursed was fascinating so if you like the concept of killer items that stalk, that obviously you're not seeing any kind of crazy special effects here with the mannequin, it's literally just a mannequin, um, then I would say check it out. This is available for rent. It's available on Hoopla, Voodoo, Google Play, Microsoft Store, and Amazon Video. And if you like the cursed item horror idea and this kind of like teens in distress, you'll like this film. If that's not for you, then skip it. Um, and I just realized I forgot to say The Nun 2. There's yeah, but a... I just want to say, because I didn't watch this one, Don't Look Away, yet. But I did. Erica and I did watch the trailer, and she's going, I'm so good, this is all you. And <laughs> yeah, this is totally a movie I need to watch, because, I mean, I, I'm a sucker for just ridiculously silly. I don't think it's silly. bad. I, I wouldn't say it's silly. It takes no, itself it just seriously, looks silly, but, but like, yeah. It looks silly by the trailer, but I know it's not. Like, it's cursed item horror, right? Like, to me, it's no more different than, um, what was the one where the chick gets the cursed ring or whatever? The old woman goes to the bank, and she has to turn her down for the mortgage. And Oh, uh, Drag Me to Hell? Yeah, like, honestly, it's not too far off from that concept. Like, there's an item that's cursed that, you know, or I guess the dress one um, in fabric. The idea of having, like, a cursed item or the slacks with the jeans that are oh, yeah. haunted. You know what I mean? Like, if you like those kind of films, you'll probably like this, right? You'll probably dig this. So Nice. Erica just doesn't like Joy. So that's why I did way better. Not because well, I couldn't why, see her. Why do you think she uh, chooses me? Because she doesn't like Joy. It's true. She's like, you know, I really like having a lot of stress in my life. <laughs> I am and a guy that's obsessed people. with banging pumpkins. I'm definitely going to hook up with uh, this guy. Um, just call me Scotty Scotty <laughs> Pumpkin Pumpkin Potty. Pumpkin Potty. Honestly, I would rather watch that than this fucking film again. This film? Okay. And which one is this? For the love of God, stop making nun movies, okay? For the love <laughs> of fucking God, I would rather watch Endsmen and Skinamarink back to back than this shit again. So what you're this saying movie, is the nun two is no good. sense. It <clears throat> number one movie of the year, right up there with Killer Book Club. Um, Do it. So okay. Uh -oh. So this movie made no sense. All right. So so the greatest evil in the Conjuring universe is the tagline. It's 110 minutes of your life that you're never going to get back. Um. The four years after the events of Abby of St. Cara, Sister Irene returns once again and comes face to face with the demonic force, Velk Velky Valkyrie, the nurse, the nun, right? Is that how you say it? Velk Velk uh, Velky. Fuck, I can't remember. Velka Velka. I don't know. Fuck, it doesn't matter. It's a shitty demon anyway. Anyway, this movie fucking sucks. Okay, so let's let's go over. I'm gonna give some spoilers here. They're not huge spoilers. Like you could still see the movie. But in this movie, okay, so we all know you have Valak. to go back to the Valak. Thank you. We all know you got to go back to the original protagonist, right? So the priest, I don't know where he is. Apparently he's been promoted to a bishop, blah, blah, blah. She's living, so our protagonist nun from the first movie is living like a quiet life in this, in this, in this um, I don't know, nunnery or whatever she's living. 
and church, I don't know, whatever the fuck she's living in, monastery, I don't know, wherever she is. And she she has this, like, re- rebel nun that's kind of becoming a nun, but she's not fully a nun. The only good thing about this movie is the young woman who plays this rebel nun is Storm Reed. You may know her from The Invisible Man. You may also know her from Missing. Excellent hmm. young actress. I appreciate that she had to do this movie for money. So anyway, um, <laughs> she's the fucking highlight, just so we're clear. So... Um, there's a part where, like, the Pope or the Bishop shows up because there's been a murder because the the nun has been released. The demon's been released. And he comes back to Sister Irene and he's like, look, um, I know that you, like, faced this demon before and we need you to do it again. She's like, I don't want to do it again. I almost died the last time. And he's like, I know what you performed was a miracle and you need to perform another one. And somehow this convinces this bitch to head off on a fucking train and go to where the demon is. She's just like, all right, you know what? You ain't wrong. And somehow, and somehow, <clears throat> the demon has like latched himself, to, like latched himself to a specific character, and can fucking travel, and also like get Expedia points apparently because it goes different fucking places. And then, like, the demon can be in multiple places at once, halting haunting multiple people at once. So it'd be like the demon haunting me at my place in Waterdown, Ontario, Canada, and also Scott at the same time in Schwartz Creek, Michigan. Makes no fucking sense. That's not a thing. If a yeah, ghost is here, it can't be there. That's ridiculous. Right? Anyway, fucking stupid. Dumb movie. So, like, it was so bad. I was watching it with George. And I mentioned George on this podcast before because George is a media, medium horror fan. Like, I go through and I and I kind of, like, screen out movies that I think he'll enjoy. And he, tur- and he loved the first nun. He really liked it. We got halfway through this and he's like, when is this shit going to be over? <laughs> like, I don't know. Wow. <laughs> I said, do you want me to shut it off? He's like, no, I, I like at this point, like, like I just want to see how this shit show ends. And for like a couple days afterwards, he'd be like, oh, man, we should watch The Nun 2 again. It was so good. Such a <laughs> great movie. And Scott knows George, so he knows what that <laughs> means. I mean, spoiler, it wasn't a good movie. Yeah. I don't know, Conjuring. He's making fun of it. <laughs> Fuck's sake, can we stop pulling movies from this fucking universe? Like, I'm hashtag kind of over it. I don't know how you feel, but the Conjuring universe, like, enough. Oh, you know how I feel enough. about this damn universe. Yeah, you don't like it, do you? No, never did. Oh, yeah, like, this was just a sequel that everyone can skip this year. If this, if I did bottom tens, this would be in my bottom. It's just such a piece of garbage. I'll say if I did bottom tens for, like, all the movies I never liked, the entire universe would probably be in that bottom 10. No. Oh, but Except Dave Bailey gave it three and a half stars. Did you see this? Dave Bailey gave it three and a half well, stars. Dave uh, Bailey also that nice gave Dave. something else a uh, better score than me that we'll be talking about here in a split second. You know what, Dave? It's Heroes. Rob gave it a half a star. Rob, we're friends now because that is a fair <laughs> rating. Dave, I'm glad you enjoyed it. All joking aside, I really am. I just thought this was a big piece of poo poo. Um, though I did like the kid in it and I did like the nun that didn't want to be a nun. Those were my favorite characters. So, yeah. But why don't you bring us in with this sexy one that you watched? All right. So, uh, the, this one I watched due to our good buddy, Dave Bailey. Uh, he messaged us in our chat group and just said, Hey, you guys should give this, uh, check this one out. I forget. What was it? Uh, I think it was from the same people that did slash Lorette party that we really liked. Um, and I think he backed this. So he's like, yeah, you know, check it out. I'm like, all right. So I watched it and it's called Murder Size. 84 minute runtime. Uh, Phoebe is an obsessed fitness nerd who gets her big break on a sleazy workout video. After being ridiculed by her co-stars, Phoebe befriends a mafia princess wild child who teaches her how to murder her way to the top. Um, I'm sorry, Dave. I just what the not... fuck that that even sounds stupid. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm sorry, Dave. Like I just could not get into this one. Yeah, like it is one of those where I feel it was one of the we're purposely making this so bad it's good, but we're purposely doing it so it doesn't have that effect for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I will admit there were some moments that were entertaining and like silly but yeah this one all around just didn't work for me and the 84 minute runtime just felt like it dragged on which is not good good sign but like i wanted to at least give it a shot because you know i like to give the indie films a shot and especially if if dave bailey recommends it i always got at least check it out i know him and i don't always see the eye to eye but he's always got unique tastes and yeah this one just wasn't for me um but I see Matt Wood did give it three out of five stars. I think I gave it two out of five. So, I mean, I didn't absolutely hate it. 
just not for me. Well, that is nice. Or if people want to watch it, where can they find it? Uh, this one is on Tubi and Apple TV and uh, apparently Plex for free. Oh, and if for some reason you want to rent the nun too, it's on Google Play, Amazon, YouTube, blah, blah, blah. But save your fucking money. So, um, <laughs> sorry, Dave. Sorry, Dave. Um, Appendage. Did you watch this one? Not yet. This one is on the list to watch. All right. This is a 94-minute runtime. Embrace your inner demons. After hitting a breaking point, Hannah's inner thoughts fizzle into a monstrous creature that threatens to upend her life. Uh, this is a very interesting film. Um, it's it goes back and forth, as Brandon Orlick was saying earlier to me, between a creature feature and a mental health kind of what's real, what's not Ooh, real okay. horror film. Um, it's very creative. I will they I will definitely say it's a unique film. Uh, you know, a lot of films do regurgitate concepts, and there's nothing wrong with that. I I think that. You know, you can build on concepts like look at pregnancy horror. Sometimes it's done really well. Sometimes it's not. Uh, but people are always trying to put their own spin on it. This is a movie that's very, very interesting. And I and I think that it may be on some people's top tens uh, hmm. if they're into this kind of um, kind of creature-ish feature kind of film i i think this is a very very solid film and i think people would be at a loss if they missed it this is a hulu film and it's on disney plus in canada and you can see the quality that's put into it so i would say if you have hulu or disney plus up here it's worth the watch no matter what your interest is you're not going to be bored you will be interested to see what's going to be happening and it's very good for a 94 minute runtime uh the acting is quite good in it everyone uh definitely pulls their weight and yeah i definitely recommend that you check it out scotty when you get a chance to awesome yeah i really because uh, i seen the trailer for this one and this one was a nope from erica but that's just because of it's like the body horror stuff and she's like oh, no i'm good no uh-uh. like it just kind of weirds her out so i was like Yep, I'll watch this one when I get a chance because it looked right up my alley. So I'm very curious. And yeah, hearing you and Brandon both talking about it, I was like, yeah, this sounds like something I may enjoy pretty well. And it's, and it's quality from Hulu, right? Like Hulu can sometimes put out some really good stuff. And this is definitely oh, yeah. good. One. Yeah, for sure. And, and I will jump on to the next one. Um, the next one is a Netflix, I believe, original or yep. at least picked up by Netflix. Yeah. Uh, called Nowhere. A young pregnant woman named Mia escapes from a country at war by hiding in a maritime container aboard a cargo ship. After a violent storm, Mia gives birth to the child while lost at sea, where she must fight to survive. So this is a survival horror inside of a cargo container on a ship. Um, I really did, because I, I watched this one first and I told you about it, because I think mm-hmm. you were still on your trip when I was watching it. Yeah. Um, and I really dug this. Uh, I have my gripes here and there towards like the third quarter or the third act, but like the way it starts off is very fucking heavy. Mm-hmm. Like the content is talking about with the illegal immigrant uh, situation and people just trying to run away from the run away from a country. And I think it was actually Russia they were running away from. Yeah, I I know they were trying to get to Ireland. Yeah, I remember that part of it. Yeah, or no, I, I thought they were escaping Ireland. I think. No, they were going to Ireland because the people that, yeah, anyway, they, they were going to Ireland. Okay. But yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, like that first act when all this uh, stuff happens, like it's it's a very he- heavy, very real, like social political topic. Yes. And, some, and it's hard to watch for certain scenes. And then it gets to the survival horror part, which I really enjoyed this character and was totally behind her and wanting her to survive. Um, of course, pregnancy horror in 2023, shocker. But uh, there was that. The only issue I ended up having with her is she was basically like a female version of MacGyver towards the end. Yeah, I I ended up not liking her at first. Um, though I did think she made some pretty clever decisions at the yeah. beginning. Um, I think around the time, you know, dealing with the pregnancy, I found her a little annoying at times. Um, but I got behind her. I did. I, uh, I came full circle. So I think for a Netflix pick, 
this was a pretty good film. We do give awards for Netflix films. And, and until I horror. and survival horror, and I think this would be up for both. And until I watched my most recent Netflix award, this definitely would have been or a movie today. This would have been in the running for the top award. Nice. But now it has some competition. Um, but that being said, you know, this is where Netflix does not disappoint. It it picked up a really solid international film, a really good survival horror film. And yes, we consider this horror. Absolutely. Um, and if you like survivalist horror, this is for you. I did watch it with dubbing because I was working and the dubbing was fine. Yep, same. Um, yeah, like I didn't find it. It didn't throw me off or anything like that. Um, it's available on Netflix. And Tim Davis from Dummies of Horror also gave it four stars. Scott's given it four stars. I would probably give it three and a half to four stars. Like I thought it was a really solid film. Um, I think for Netflix, again, you know, Netflix doesn't always come out with a lot, but at least they come out with a handful of gems. Uh, the right. Strays is still one of my favorite ones that came out this year on Netflix. Holy so it did come out this year, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. Holy and uh, so there's three that really stand in here. Of course, Killer Book Club, um, my number one movie of the year. Uh... So, but that even itself was entertaining. I will say Netflix, um, they don't get tons, but when they do get some stuff here and there, they can get some really entertaining films. So yeah, check it out if you got the netty. It's definitely worth it. Yep, I definitely agree with that. And uh, this next one, have you watched this yet? No, I have not. All right. So uh, this is one that Erica and I ended up watching called Deliver Us. Um, got 103-minute runtime. Uh, the uh, tagline is, a virgin will give birth blah, blah, blah. A virgin will give birth to heaven and hell. When a nun in a remote convent claims immaculate conception, the Vatican sends a team of priests to investigate concerned about an ancient prophecy that a woman will give birth to twin boys, one the Messiah and the other the Antichrist. Holy shit. This, like, this is your, like, at first I'm going, okay, this is your typical religious, Catholic religious horror film. We'll we'll see what it's, you know, see what it does. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. holy Mm -hmm. shit, this was really freaking good. Really freaking good. Like, I, like, maybe top 10 material good. Like, uh, really? Yeah, like, the acting in this was freaking awesome. It was brutal. It was creepy. It was fucked up. Like, it had me glued to the screen. I want to rewatch it because I think I still miss some pieces here and there. But this this was a very solid watch. Like, I was not expecting it to be as good as it was. And there was, like, a, yeah, one of the, it might be in the running for one of the best deaths, too. One of the yeah, best really? kills or whatever. Yeah. Like, this had some really cool moments to it. Really freaking good. I highly, highly recommend this one. Um, so I'll have the, to check this out. Yes, I think you would really dig it. Uh, this one right now is available to buy or rent on Google Play, Vudu, Amazon Video, Redbox, and Microsoft Store. Wow, I'm digging it. I will definitely check it out. I can, I'm watching the trailer right now, and it looks good. Yeah, I was impressed. We went in blind with this one, didn't even watch the trailer, and I'm going, okay. Well, actually, I think Erica watched the trailer and said, this looks really good. You should watch it. I'm like, okay, let's watch it. Well, I'm excited for this. I am here for it, Scotty. You're, you're excited. Bringing Feel some, these nipples. You're bringing some good ones. You got till death do us part and deliver us. Honestly, like there's hope. Sometimes that is all I can do. Just bring everyone hope. Ooh, and now we have a a really special <laughs> one we're going to talk about. Oh, we sure do. Uh, no one will save you. Don't worry, Phil Ray. I will. Um, this is a 93 minute runtime, a home invasion no one saw coming, and a movie that should have been a lot shorter than it was. This was a 93 oh, minute runtime, no. and this could have been an hour. I'm no. sorry, the ending was weird as fuck, and it didn't make any sense at all. Uh, um, you're you can't deny that. No, I, I, there's parts to it I can kind of argue with, but what that it made sense? Yeah, there's pieces that I could be like, okay, this I could see why this happened. Like I, okay. not, it's not my favorite ending, but I, I okay. see why it did. A young woman who's been alienated from her community finds herself in a face-off against a host of extraterrestrial beings who threaten her future while forcing her to deal with her past. This is a 3.1 lady and on letterbox. Uh, Dave Bailey's given it four and a half stars. Phil Ray's given it a half a star. <laughs> I'm not really funny. Uh, Phil, I I understand. 
Uh, Matt Woods giving it three and a half stars. Scott's giving it four and a half. Tim's giving it three and a half. Um, oh, this is perfect. This is a perfect review. Overall, this is a good film. Very well shot, incredibly acting, and some creepy scenes. But the ending left me feeling a little underwhelmed. That's exactly how I felt. Um, I get what they were going for, but I wasn't overall a fan. Still definitely a must-watch for this year. That's exactly how I feel. Tim Davis, you took the words right out of my mouth. Um, so go ahead, Scott, because oh. I know you love it. So Yeah, Tim Davis doesn't know what the hell he's talking about, so it's all right. Just like you, you're fine. You, you, you guys don't know what you're talking about. Because, uh, yeah, this movie fucking rocked. Um, for what, one, what? Okay, it didn't rock. It didn't. This it movie, fucking rocked. This movie was... I'm sorry to you and Dave. Dave also liked Murderside, but at least Dave supports indie films. You didn't even like Murderside, and now you're turning your back on him for this. This movie you know was no. You're turning your I, back. I'm ignoring this. Back towards him for you. You, two, Will you let me talk about him. my thoughts. Sorry, I was trying to be clear what I was trying to say that you're turning back to him, and I was messing up my words. It's late in the evening. Damn it, woman. <laughs> sorry, I can't. Yeah, go and go no, on. This movie fucking rough. Ah, uh, this is. Top five material for me. This is fucking. This is how the uh, aliens are fucking creepy looking. It is shot eh, beautifully. Sure, if this was 1985 and I was. No, oh, these, these aliens, aliens were CGI, creepy as fuck. I guess. No, these aliens. I'm sorry. Were the the aliens yet. from Aliens are way more scarier. The thing is, way say more they, scarier. I didn't say they weren't scarier, but these ones fucking ruled. I nah. love the look of them. Yeah. It was the play on the uh, gray-skinned aliens and just turning them into a horror film. Um, the way it was shot, beautiful. The fact that there is no dialogue besides two lines and they are repeated and it is for a purpose. Like There's no dialogue through this entire movie and it still told the story beautifully. The ending, yeah, it is. that's why it's only getting a 9 out of 10 for me right now is because the ending was a bit odd and not to my liking but I get what they were trying to go with there. Um, but I found everything about this film completely fascinating, and I didn't feel it drug at all. It flew Yeah, but by other me. people cannot like it. I don't know why you and Dave are so upset that someone didn't like it. I'm like, not honestly, upset. Like, I'm just yeah, talking you both shit. got really upset at Phil, and, like, in defense of Phil, like, guys, it's okay. Yeah. It's not liking it doesn't take it away from you guys liking it. Well, and, and, <laughs> like, well, it and when it comes to Phil... Right? And when it comes to Phil, I just like to give him shit because he is he's our friend with the hot take. I love Phil. And he does. He he gives the hot takes and I got to give him shit sometimes just because it's that's like, how I've this always film is not going to be for everyone, guys. I'm really like oh, no. if it was like and I get that you and Dave think it's fucking like God's gift and that's fine. But it's not. It's it's an average, decent. Oh, enough it is film, just not. To everybody. Right. It's it's well made. It's well acted. But the ending is stupid. It makes very little sense. And so and far, that's I th- all I'm hearing you complain about, though, is the ending. And I so. think, and I think the film. I think a the girl was annoying. I wanted her to die as oh, soon as possible. I was behind um, her the whole time. And and I, I don't know. I found that it jumped all from over of her. These aliens were trying to get her to explore her past, but yet it was an invasion film. Pick a fucking lane. Like it was just, and that's fine. Some people like that. Like, I like highly politicized horror. Not as not for everybody. And I totally respect and get that. That is that is my thing. That is what I like. And someone could watch a movie I like. And I guess I just am kinder than some other people. And I can just... <laughs> well, you just... You just like, instantly made fun of it there. You know? So you're not much kinder. Well, no, that's fine. People like it and that's fine. I just found that it didn't, it tried to be too much of everything. And I, I think there was some great scenes in it, but I would have preferred if it was just an invasion film. I mean, that's like, what it was. But it wasn't. It was also her looking at her past and dealing with it all this them... demon shit. And like, that wasn't needed. It wasn't. Well, that was to tell the story of why no one liked her. You had to have yeah, but that wasn't needed. No, it wasn't. When the when we had the blind chick that lived in the house that got broken into years ago, that movie that came out, I can't remember the name of it now because we've seen so many fucking oh, films. Oh god, with the scene I dog that horrible movie. No, not that one. The one before that, the writer, and she's isolated, and the guy thinks she's gonna be an easy target. Oh, hush. Hush. Like to me, this could have been another hush, but it went on this really fucking weird route. I didn't need the background. Like I got enough background on why she was there and what her issues were and all that other shit. 
Like, I didn't need all this, like... There wasn't I, a lot I of that. I felt eh, there was too much of it. The old ending of that and all this, like, other shit. I, I, it did not work for me. And for other people, that works. That's awesome. I do think this is a high-quality film. Like, as I said, I agree 100% with Tim's review. He's 100% right. This is a, still a definite must-see for this year. Because either you're going to be a Phil, right? Not like it at all. You're going to be a Scott and Dave and you're going to love it. Or you're going to be a me and Tim and think it's okay. But it's it's definitely deserves its viewing. Oh, it I, definitely yeah. deserves its viewing, right? This and is definitely a must-see for the year. 100%. Like, And if people had this on their top 10, I would never criticize unless it was you and Dave. But no, that's because you guys were mean. To, you was because you guys were mean to poor Phil. I wasn't and mean to poor Phil. That is how Phil, Phil and I jab at each other. All right. Well, as long as everyone is fine in the in the in the pumpkin smashing. And I'm saying Phil knows. He, Phil knows he's my boo. Boo. <laughs> I I you know what like again certain scenes like where she goes into the sheriff's office and the chick spits on her. I thought that was really well done. Um, that's not a spoiler. Like, honestly, that's a fucking random scene that happens, but it's a, it's a decent enough film. It just was not for me. I was very excited to see it. And I was like, yeah, yeah. All right. But <clears throat> I'm glad that we had a variety of films this year and I'm glad you liked it so much, Scott. Yeah. Cause yeah, this one is definitely in the top five contenders for me. Like it's, 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 there's, there's definitely a chance this will be winning some awards. Hey, and you know what? We'll have different lists. Sometimes we have lists that are very similar. And sometimes so we have free. lists that have Killer Book Club. I'm not going to have Killer <laughs> Book Club in my top ten, though it's, I am tempted it's, to. It's your all-time favorite movie alongside Barry the Bride. Don't lie. Yeah, could you imagine if I had, like, Skin of a Rink, Ends Men, yeah, and his men None yep. 2. Um, you Heather know, being and gaslit I... by 2023. <laughs> oh, yeah, I liked Bury the Bride. I still like Bury the Bride. Um, but yeah, I, yeah. Anyway, this one is available. I guess yeah, I should, did you introduce it or did I introduce it? I introduced uh, it, right? We'll talk about it yes, for a while. Yes, you introduced while. it, yeah. Okay. It's available on Hulu, Hulu in the United States, Disney Plus in Canada. You know, if you're a horror fan, you should watch it. Definitely Absolutely. worth your time. Um, I probably give it a five out of 10. It just wasn't for me. It just wasn't for me, but you know, I get why people like Dave and Scott really liked it and that's their thing. Um, I just think they tried to do too much in this film and it was a detriment. So uh, I, I respect your opinion, even if it's wrong. <laughs> so the next one, even if it's wrong Dave's like, she doesn't even like the ends men, Scott, honestly. Like, she couldn't, you know, why are you in bothering? (laughs) So, Totally Killer is the next movie we're going to talk about. This is a 106-minute runtime. Now, this is an example of a movie that I probably really enjoyed that Scott's not going to find as funny as I did. Yeah, I still Um, need to watch it. Yeah, I definitely found this funnier than you will. Uh, murder is so 1987. So 35 years after the shocking murders of three teens, an infamous killer returns on Halloween night to claim a fourth victim. When 17 year old Jamie comes face to face with the mask maniac, she accidentally time travels back to 1987, which honestly is really fucking funny. Her being 1987. And this like main actress, uh, her name is, uh, Kieran Shipka. And she's- oh, yeah, she was, uh, she's, Sabrina, <clears throat> Sabrina in the Netflix series, and she's uh, uh, in that movie. Uh, God damn it, uh, the Black Coast Daughter. Yes, Black Coast Daughter. Yeah, she's she's fucking hilarious in this film. I'm not gonna she's lie, she's just a great actress. <laughs> she she's the reason why this film's funny is her delivery of some of these lines. Um, and and she teams up with her teenage mother to take the psycho down once and for all. This is very light on the horror, okay? Let's make this very clear. This is very light on the horror. Um, and it's it's definitely more of a comedy. There's some cheesy shit in this film. Um, Olivia Holt's in it. Um, Julia Bow- Bowen's in it. Um, Lachlan Moreau's in it, whom we all know from Scary Movie and <laughs> like other random horror films that he's been in um it's a comedy it's silly it's about this girl from 2023 going back to 1987 and bringing her like kind of wokeness with her in 1987 (laughs) like there's just some funny fucking conversations like she goes into the school office at one point and she asks for like 
her fret like a girl's schedule and like she's trying to give the reasons why she needs it and they just give it to her <laughs> like they're like sure here you go it's like wow it must have been wild to fly on planes right now. like yeah. you just said that, that's really funny right i think if you're old enough that you were you can remember the 80s and you know now it's funnier i think you do right. have to be from like a certain age category to find this funny um <clears throat> that being said it's very light on the horror it is, is not a strong horror film, so... Well, this is from the same right? person, I think, that did Happy Death Day and uh, Freaky, so... It's silly. Yeah. Right? It's silly. That's, it's it's on Prime. From it. It's on Prime. So, like, they ha- Prime hasn't come out with a lot this year, Amazon. It hasn't come out with much this year, so... You know, this is probably one of their, like, best films <laughs> in terms of, like, comedy horror. So, people that we know that has watched it, Matt Wood's given it three stars... Um, Rob Humphrey gave it two. Kate Pollock gave it three and a half. I think those are all fair ratings. Like for me, this was a five out of five. Oh, I wow. do not think this is a five out of five film for other people. It just made me laugh that much with some of the shit this chick said. Like my enjoyment of laughing at the jokes. Like if I was in a bad place again, like I was earlier this summer when I was really hurt and not sure if I was going to get the full mobility of my arm back. Um, I would watch this film because it's just really fucking funny to me, to me, to me. Um, I think you'll give it like a two and a half, Scott, like two and a half to three. I think that's where you'll probably sit with it. I mean, maybe. I mean, I still want to watch it just so I can tell you for sure that you're wrong. Oh, no. watch it. Watch it and see if you like it. I don't know. Yeah. I think Erica will say, like I was, it too. I was curious. Like, you guys are old enough to get it, the jokes, you know? Yeah. And, and like I said, I like Happy Death Day and I like Freaky, so I want to give this a shot. Yeah, like it's silly. It's silly fun. So if that's your thing and you have Prime, check it out. Uh, yeah, definitely. I will. I, I will try to watch this one before we record next time, even though I probably won't bring it up just because I usually don't bring up duplicates most of the time. No, it's because we can't now. We have too many fucking films to bring up. Um, right. Have you seen yeah. this one? No, this is another one you told me I need to watch it. Didn't get a chance oh, to Oh, man. Yet. This one is a really solid film, actually. Um, this will be in my top ten. It lives inside. Uh, this is a 99-minute Oh, kind of like pumpkins live inside me. <laughs> just like that. Just like that. You can't contain evil, just like you can't contain them pumpkins, Scott. They keep falling out of my ass. An Indian-American teenager struggling with her cult... Okay, well, it's South Asian-American teenager struggling with her cultural identity has a falling out with her former best friend and, in the process, unwittingly reaches a demonic en- entity that grows stronger by feeding on human loneliness. Um, this movie really relies heavily on some on the Hindu faith. And particularly some beliefs within the Hindu faith. And it was done really, really well. Um, I was married to someone who was South Asian. And my ex-mother-in-law uh, was a Hindu. And very, there were very similar um, beliefs and customs that I saw in this that I thought were handled really respectfully. Um, I'm just say, I am saying this from a white perspective. I'm not South Asian. Just from my experience previously, I thought some things were handled really well. Maybe someone who's South Asian would have a different opinion. Uh, but I thought the horror was also really good, too. If you are tired of Christian-themed ghost stories, this is a really nice break. Um, I should say demon and kind of afterlife stuff. Like, I think you'll like this, Scotty, because it's something different. Okay. Yeah, because this you know, is like what how, I want to check out. You know how we had, like, the vigil last year come out, and it was nice that it was on the Jewish faith? Yeah. Like, it was just something... Yeah, it's like that. Okay. Like, it's just something else that's not the same thing fucking repeated. Um, the young lady in this is excellent. Um, she was also in Missing. Uh, there's a couple of first time actors that are in this or these are some of the first films that they have been in um and it's really 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 well done i really really enjoyed it and i i do strongly recommend renting this one i think this is a movie that everyone should check out this year on a 99 uh, minute runtime you're not going to regret it matt wood gave it three kate pollock gave it three i think those are all very fair ratings for me it's probably close to a five just because i enjoyed it so much um, but yeah, check it out. It it's called It Lives Inside and it's available on VOD at Amazon, Apple, Google Play, and YouTube. Nice. Yeah, this is definitely one that I have on my list to watch. Uh so yeah, the next one, speaking of, you know, really serious films, <laughs> we got the one that I have been waiting for for the last couple of months, and that mm. is Slother House. Yes, Slother House. 
the tagline, don't rush, die slow. <laughs> Wanting to have a killer year, sorority sister Emily Young realizes she might just be the best option for her sorority. While beginning her campaign, she finds an adorable sloth that steals her heart and soon realizes she just might steal the hearts and votes of her sorority sisters. But when bodies slowly begin to pile up in the Sigma Lamba Thedai house, Emily and her sorority sisters realize the deaths are being caused by their new house mascot, the cuddly sloth Alpha. While Emily and her sisters escape the house with their lives, or is this death sloth with three razor-sharp claws too quick for them? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I tried to watch this and I had to shut it off in the first five minutes. <laughs> so I'm I'm hoping it got better and I'll just go um, back up to it. I will say if you couldn't get into it within the first five minutes, don't bother, Heather. Okay. That's like, fair. This though is totally a like I saw the trailer months ago and went, Oh my god, this looks looks absolutely dumb. I am all here for it. And I watched it, and yeah, I had so much fucking fun with this movie. It is dumb. It is silly. Um, it cannot be taken seriously. The acting is not good. The oh, the acting is. I thought maybe the acting would be cute. Like it would. I mean, be... it's cute, but it's not great. Okay. It's not horrible acting, but yeah, just and it's very uh, new age with like modern day with like the constant texting on the screen and the social media and stuff like that. That's kind of constantly uh, popping up, um, which I don't mind because, you know, more social media horror for us. Um, but the thing that I loved about this film was the puppet of the sloth alpha. It is all practical. You can tell it's low budget, but it looks so freaking cute. This movie is adorable and funny. The only thing that keeps this movie from getting a higher than a seven for me is I wish there was some gore actually added to this film because Alpha goes on a freaking slaughtering spree, but you really don't see much special effects wise. And I'm like, man, if they would have just upped the gore in this, this could have been way up there for me because it's just that perfect just silly cute animal killing in most ridiculous ways possible it if you're into just dumb movies with like silly things like silly titles like slother house or silly things like a sloth driving a car and actually knowing what it's doing this movie's for you <laughs> also, it's like michael myers people how did the sloth learn to drive the car <laughs> oh people were actually arguing that and i'm going guys it's a sloth uh, it's driving a, sloth. a car turn your brain off <laughs> yeah i feel like that doesn't require a lot of analytical skill set so where no. can people find this if they also want to engage uh it is um to to buy it is on amazon apple tv google play movies voodoo and to rent apple tv google play and voodoo and it is now streaming apparently just started streaming on hulu ah uh, fun times fun times well there you guys go yeah, I definitely Scott's recommend movies it. this year. Are... <laughs> no one will save you in Slaughterhouse. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> the best of the best, baby. Hey, we all got to have our high quality, well made films. And then we have No One Will Save You. So, you know, I'm just kidding. Oh. I'm just kidding. Oh. No, I'm kidding. Oh. Don't save oh. you as. Oh. Don't Save You is a well-made film. I'm just being facetious. Um, after all, it wasn't The Nun 2. <laughs> nothing, True. Nothing is The Nun 2. And then you got this one coming up that I started I to watch, do. but you're like, you watch this with Erica, so I haven't watched it yet. because we. Oh, yeah, I think Erica will like it. Yeah, so, okay, I hope she likes it. Fuck. Uh-oh, mm. it's my chance to redeem myself. We'll see how this goes. Will you redeem yourself? <laughs> after Quicksand. <laughs> Ah, oh, shit, that was funny. Anyway, all right. <laughs> Dark Harvest. This is a 93-minute runtime. Uh, evil Stocks. Get it? Stocks, <laughs> like <laughs> <from> Stocks. <laughs> yeah, I know. In a cursed <laughs> town, the annual harvest has become a brutal battle for survival. On Halloween 1963, Sawtooth Jack, a terrifying legend, rises for the cornfields, threatening the town's children. A group of boys unite to defend the murder to defeat the murderous scarecrow before midnight. Richie, a rebellious outcast, joins the run, motivated by his brother's previous victory. As the hunt progresses, Richie makes a shocking discovery and faces a pivotal choice to break the relentless cycle. 
Um, Matt Woods gave this four stars. Dave Bailey gave it three and a half. Look, Dave, we're going to come back together to get its friends. Um, Kate gave it four. I really enjoyed this film. I thought it was similar flavor to The Purge, only a little bit more enjoyable than the sequels of The Purge. Not talking about the first Purge. Even the second one's not too bad. But you know when you get to, like, the last one? Yeah. Last Purge? Yeah, that one. Like, this is better than that. Okay. Um... I, I thought this was a perfect runtime at 93 minutes. I found it quite enjoyable. I found the characters all quite affable. Um, I really didn't know how things were going to land. I really didn't know the outcome. Uh, and I was surprised. So when you have a movie like that, I think that's a really, really good sign. It is available on... Google, Vudu, Prime, Amazon, YouTube. I think it's worth any rental. I think this is a great fucking Halloween film. If you're looking for something new to watch this Halloween, rent this. 93 minutes. You will not be disappointed. Very good film. Less is said because I think you just got to watch it. When other ones given it four stars, three and a half, it's a sign that it's worth your money. Right. Nope. That is, this will definitely be one to try to watch this weekend then. I just wouldn't wait for the time to watch it with Erica. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely watch it with Erica. And then you watched this one, and so did I. Yeah, I sure did. Uh, so, yeah, the next one is a prequel, uh, Pet Cemetery Bloodlines. Tagline is, death is different here. 87-minute uh, runtime. In 1969, a young Judd Crandall has dreams of leaving his hometown of Ludlow, uh, Maine, behind him, but soon discovers sinister secrets buried within and is forced to confront a dark, family history that will forever keep him connected to the town of Ludlow. Um, so, yeah, this is a, I'm not sure if this is supposed to be a prequel to the Pet Cemetery readaptation that came out with John Lithgow, like in 2020 or whatever it was, or 2019, or if this is supposed to just be a prequel to Stephen King's story or a prequel to the 80s Pet Cemetery. I'm not sure which way they're going with this 100%. Um, but, it is basically telling the story that uh, Judd tells uh, the main character in the original Pet Cemetery when he's talking about yep. the Pet yep. Cemetery. It's that story. And um, yeah, I found this to be pretty good. Like, uh, I was invested. The acting was pretty decent. Um, there was some fucked up moments, uh, and it mm -hmm. definitely gave that Pet Cemetery vibe to me. Though, like, I do have some mild complaints because, like, in the book and in, like, the main, the stories, they do come back from the cemetery a little quickly compared to what they should. <laughs> and, uh... You're like, they, they turn around and you're like, fuck, you're back? <laughs> yeah, already? Like, how the hell did that happen? So, like, I blink and you already returned. What? No, you gotta, like... No, it doesn't work like that. Uh, and then, uh... You know, then, I, then also, just, like, the lack of main accents... Which, like I say, nitpicks. I still really just dug this, though. I thought this was a fun prequel that I literally had zero expectations when I heard it was coming out. So I wasn't even going to watch this because I was like, oh, my God, this looks stupid. And I was because I think I was like, I don't want to watch this. It looks stupid. I was presently pleasantly surprised. Right. I would not say this is a great film, but I would say it was entertaining enough. Yeah, I, like, it's one of those I didn't hate my time with it. Yeah, like, I thought that even though the accent wasn't there, I did feel like who Judd was as a person was continuous. Like, a nice, he was a nice person in both the original and the remake. He was a nice person. Mm -hmm. um, he was a nice person here, too, and had good intentions. Yeah. I don't get after, though, what he went through in this one, why he buried the cat. <laughs> Yeah, why the... he showed. Did you wonder that too? I was like, so, you know, Judd, you knew. Yeah, well. Like, did he just get old and forget? Maybe, which is possible. Well, I think one of the things that's always been, like, kind of hinted at too is it's almost like he'd rather take a chance instead of dealing with grief. Like, that's just, you know, the power of yeah, grief will make he, you do stupid things. And he felt sorry for her, I guess, like yeah. the, the kid. Honestly, I know Matt Woods gave a scathing review here. I, I don't know. I, I thought it was, you know, I thought it was entertaining. I was entertained throughout it. Do I think it's anything to overly write home about? No. But I had a good enough time with him. And if you have Paramount Plus, which is what it is streaming on, um, I recommend watching it. It's on all the Paramount Pluses, like Paramount Plus Party, or you have it on, let's say, other means. 
Um, but yeah, I don't know. I thought it was okay. I think that's the best way to describe it. It was okay. Yeah, I'll say, yeah, I, I think I gave it like a six and a half. Like it was pretty entertaining for that. was like more than I expected it to be. Well, we'll move on to the next one because we, we have more to go, believe it or not, people. I know. This is going to be an episode going just for a of while. us. Yeah. I know. We'll, we'll, shut, we'll cut the other down, stuff down quickly. Don't worry. Um, the Lockdown Tower, also known as The Tower or Le Tour. This is a French film. Uh, which side will you choose? This is the newest drop on the Chati. In the heart of the city, the inhabitants of a tower wake up one morning to find that their building is surrounded in an opaque fog, obstructing doors and windows, a strange dark matter that devours anything that tries to pass through. Trapped, the residents try to organize themselves, but to ensure their survival, they gradually succumb to their most primal instinct as they sink into horror. This is isolation horror. It kind of reminded me a little bit of like Rabid. Um, not Rabid. What's the one, uh, the, the film by uh cronenberg where they're at the apartment building oh uh shivers shivers uh it kind of reminded me of shivers a little bit to be honest with you uh it's very dark like very dark and very like political a lot of political themes in this building in this in this movie um it is a long runtime you are looking at a 90 minute runtime it certainly feels like it I think you got to really like political horror and be very political knowledge have a really high political knowledge to enjoy this film. Okay. And not be bored of politics. There's a lot of social structure in this. There's a lot of reflecting of what probably would happen if people were in this situation. Um, and it, it kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, the platform. Oh, okay. You know how that kind of challenged you to think about the have, the have nots. Yeah. And there's really like no good ending. You know what I mean? Like this is kind of the same thing. Gotcha. Um, okay. Right. So this is available on the shutter and AMC and Amazon. I would say only watch this if that's your thing. Um, I know Tim Davis gave it a star and a half. Not surprising that he didn't like this. I was reading this thinking Tim, Hort Tim Davis is not going to like this movie. Hmm. Um, I enjoyed it. But even I was like, all right, this is a little much, guys. So that tells you something, because I have a pretty high threshold for political social horror. Right. Yes, you do. Right. So watch at your own discretion. Think about what you like. It is on the shutty. All right. Good to know. Uh, I, I would say you don't need to watch it after. I first yeah, that's what I'm thought saying. I was no, like, at first I was like, oh, yeah, 30 minutes in. I'm like, oh, fuck, Scott will love this. And then it went on and I was like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Uh, but yeah, so I will skip this one then. Um, but one I will talk about that I recommend, I found on Tubi. Um, and it is called Everybody Dies by the End. Uh, it's got a 90-minute runtime. It says 2022, Rob, so don't even give me shit. Oh, yeah, I, we don't care what you think anymore, Rob. We don't care. But uh, the tagline is, his final film has to be killer. A documentary crew follows cult classic horror director Alfred Costella as he makes his final film. An all practical masterpiece with a dark twist. So yeah, this is like filmed in that mockumentary style, which I freaking love. Um, and yeah, this camera crew goes there and like he's following this actor around with his crew and just he's trying you're basically just watching him being filmed as he's trying to make his next horror masterpiece. And this guy just continues to get more and more unhinged as the filming goes on. And he's not getting quite what he wanted. And it just goes off the rails in such a crazy, just fun, quick way. Like, this movie flew by. And Eric and I were watching this one. We're just like, what the fuck? This guy is nuts. Why are you people still here? Like, he, like, it's. It was just a blast. I had so much fun with this one. The acting in this was like that perfect over the top style of acting. Uh, we had like some guy that was pretending to be like a uh, like t shirt model. So he's got like the abs and he talks all sexy and tries to be a serious actor and it just doesn't work. And <laughs> But it's just got this really interesting but yet also dark finale. But this mm. is one of those that I definitely recommend. It was, it is my hidden gem of the year. A nice low budget hidden gem. I yes, Rob, twenty twenty two. 
I know. Shut up. I get it. But no. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I absolutely love this film. And yeah, it was definitely a hidden gem. I'm so glad I stumbled. we stumbled across this and watched it because, yeah, we just had a blast with it. And it is, I highly recommend this. Um, it looks like it is still available on Tubi. It's on YouTube to rent as well as Google Play movies. Awesome. Well, the next one I'm going to talk about is a, another Shutter release. This one was just released, I think, this week. Or maybe it was last week. Uh, the Puppet Man. This yeah, is I think a that was 20... last week. Was it last week? Yeah. Um, this one is a 2023. It is available on the Shutty. And it is You're Not in Control. The Puppet Man, a convicted killer on death row, always maintained his innocence and that it was an evil force that was controlling his body as he slaughtered his victims. Now Michelle, the, Dale, the killer's daughter, begins to suspect that there may be some truth to her father's claims when those who are around her begin to die in brutal ways. She must try and break the curse of the puppet man before all her loved ones are killed. Do you like curse films? Do you like films kind of feeling like a little bit of Final Destination shit and yeah. um, some pretty good kills in this, some pretty, uh, pr- pretty impressive death scenes? Do you miss some weightlifting death scenes? Then I suggest checking this one out. I very much enjoyed this movie. And I was just saying to Brandon Orlick earlier, I really applaud Shudder this year because I don't know if they picked necessarily 10 out of 10s this year. But what they have done is they brought us a variety. They have brought us films from all over the place. Like I looked at Lockdown Tower to The Puppet Man or, and then Nightmare. And honestly, all decent enough films all will be different preferences depending on the person, but all very, very unique. And, you know, we had Kids versus Alien that came out lit earlier this year. And I think usually we, hi- we hold Shudder to a really high. Every horror film that comes out here needs to be a 10 out of 10. And that's not always the case. I will say this is the year of variety. This is the year of I'm seeing movies that I didn't predict the ending, which I do appreciate. When you watch enough horror films, you can generally speaking predict the ending of some films. Oh, yeah. Um, You know, as much as I criticize No One Will Save You because of the ending, I didn't predict that ending. And I think that that makes it more interesting. Um, like I really didn't know where that was going to go. And same with this one here, the acting's very good. I found it very entertaining. Um, it's, it's a Matt Woods gave it three and a half stars. He's the only other one that's watched it. I definitely recommend if you have the shuddy to watch this film. I don't know if it's good enough to end on people's top tens. It would be in my top 20. I did enjoy the death scenes and what was going on in this film quite a bit. And I felt like at a 96 minutes runtime, it kept it to a reasonable length. So if you have the Shuddy, check it out. It's on all the shutters as well as all the AMCs because AMC and Shutter are all in bed together. So um, if you have any of those streaming services, watch it. Nice. Yeah, this is one I was curious about as well and just didn't get a chance to get around to it yet. Um, But... Mm -hmm. One I'm not going to recommend. Uh, <laughs> uh, this one is Star 69. And it was, uh, we found this one on Amazon. And Erica used her free, one time free rental that she had to rent this one. And we regretted even having a free rental of this. Um, uh, but awkward. Uh, the tagline is. Fear has a new number, a hundred minute runtime. A group of friends fall victim to tragic events after one of them dials star six, nine in response to a crank call. Tina, who's finally putting the missing pieces of her life back together after a car accident, robbed her of her memory a year prior, uncovers that these events are somehow linked to her past. Now she must find a way to unlock the truth that is buried deep within in order to put an end to the nightmare. Um, yeah, this movie was not good. The acting was pretty damn painful all around. Uh, very purposely low quality. Looked like it's shot on a video camera style because it's supposed to be in the, like the late 90s. Um, the only problem was it's supposed to be in the 90s, but yet no one really has a 90s hairstyle. It's all <laughs> like the modern style and no one's really does. If I remember correctly, no one was really wearing like a 90s style outfit. <laughs> so that's like, funny. 
Um, the only thing I will give this film is because this is extremely low budget. Like it wasn't a terrible watch, but it's just one I won't recommend. But uh, the only thing I will really speak highly of is there is one kill in this that made me just kind of go, oh, God, like that's brutal to the point where I'm going, this could be one of the kills of the year for our awards. Like, nice. And I told you about it and you were even going, oh, Jesus. (laughs) Yeah. So, yeah, it's pretty brutal kill. Um, But yeah, I won't spoil it in case anybody does want to watch it, but. I really don't recommend it. Mm. It's way too long for its own good. Should have been like 70 minutes tops, but they drug it out a little bit too long. And the uh, twist kind of, you can see coming. The twist. The twist. But uh, yeah, that's all I'll really say about that one. So we can move on. Well, the one I watched today, most recent drop on Netflix. And this is where Netflix pulls out some fucking winners. This is one I wanted to watch. Yeah, this is called The Conference. A team building conference for municipal... Um, municipal city employees. Yes, thank you. It's getting late in the night, and I'm getting real tired because my bedtime's moved up to 9:30 now, and we're pushing 8:30. Yeah, I was gonna say like mine's it. close to that as well. So, I oh my god, look at us! I know we're like we're old here, yeah, right? Um, anyway, for city employees, turn into a nightmare when accusations of corruption begin to circulate and plague the work environment. At the same time, a mysterious figure begins murdering the participation, the participants. This movie is fucking jokes. This movie is fucking hilarious. This movie is a must-watch for this year. Um, I know you will find it funny. Where something like totally killer is a like kind of cheesy my area. This is something that I think anyone who's ever worked in a corporate environment will find fucking hilarious. Nice. Um, the it's made I think by the same people or so the guy from the trip is in this. Okay, but he's only in it briefly. Um. Oh. He's unfortunately a character that doesn't stay in there for quite some time, but it is, it reminded me very much of the trip. Like if it was the same director that made the trip, I would not be surprised. I'm actually looking it up right now to just see, because it was, it was so fucking similar. I was like, oh my God, did this guy make that movie last year? This is very, very funny. This is a Netflix film. It's basically about a group of coworkers that go to this conference center because they're going to be building this shopping center and they're kind of working out the final details. And all there's characters that are just over the top, like the over the top eager beaver, you know, office nerd, the over the top, like alcoholic, like office person, the over the top, like we need to make everything balanced with like diversity person, the environmentalist, like Everyone, the old school guy that just wishes it was still 1980. Like it was, it's, it's so funny, the stereotypical characters that they have in this. And it's so well written. This is a must watch on Netflix. If you have Netflix, check this out. It is called The Conference. Dubbing subtitles. It's fucking funny. Watch it. Nice. Yeah, this is one I. decent. Like there's good enough kills. It's not over the top gory, but it's more comedy, but it's still entertaining. Yeah, this is one that I really want to see. So I'm I'm going to get. I'm going to get to it as soon as I can. Oh, yeah. Watch it. You got to watch it by the end of the year, Scotty. Oh, like, absolutely. Yeah. A, this is a must watch by the end of the year. And it's called The Conference. So slow clap Netflix. You know, you don't bring tons, but at least the ones you do bring, you bring some good ones. Exactly. Right. Um, and yeah, I well, guess we'll be going back to Hulu on this one. Yeah. Uh, so the next one is a documentary called Monster Inside, America's Most Extreme Haunted House. Uh, so right from the bat, you probably know this is about McCamey Manor. Well, guess what? You're right. That's uh, <laughs> a 80 minute runtime and a tagline, a true story of real terror. Russ McCamey is the creator of the world's most extreme haunted house, McCamey Manor. He is also a manipulative abuser, according to three people who realize the horror is never over once you decide to enter the manor. Yeah, so this is more a documentary on Russ himself rather than the McCamey Manor, Mm -hmm. where a lot of like the Haunted House documentaries covered McCamey Manor. This covers how vile and manipulative and nuts Russ McCamey is and the fact that he has got he has been able to get away with this for so many years and not be in trouble by the law yet is beyond me, especially after hearing some of these stories. Cause yeah, these are victims, female and male that are telling their stories about this guy. 
and what they unveil like i already knew he was a piece of crap before but like when you hear about like what he's doing nowadays with this stuff it's upsetting mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like i didn't yeah. know he'd be this dark you know i i watched this with george and and he said to me well aren't these people choosing to go there i said well you're not wrong they are but the issue I have with this is that he presents a 40 page contract when you arrive that he's basically like, sign this. Yeah. There is no way any human could read that in the period of time that's given. That is something that should be sent a week before you're going. But he doesn't because he doesn't want people to change their mind. Exactly. He's he's creating a sense of urgency. So that's actually not informed consent. So that's the number one problem with this. The second problem is that he doesn't recognize or use safety words. So other extreme haunts that were briefly explored use safety words. And we all joke about safety words, but safety words for those people who enjoy extreme sex, extreme violence, you know, whatever role play that it is, because this is just a form of role play. Have a safety word. Yeah. If that word is used, then whatever is happening, the consent is no longer implied and it should stop. He doesn't do those things. That is what's wrong with rest. It's It comes down to, A, he doesn't give enough time to people for them to review a contract. He purposely preys on people who are vulnerable and dealing with other issues, which is wrong in its own accord. But the biggest legal gap to me is not giving time for people to truly evaluate what they're signing and not valuing a safety word. Like, that's what I walked away from that doc. Yes, I think he's a fucking weirdo, but, like, that's what I walked away with. Yep, that, and I walked away with the fact that he's basically created a cult because of all the followers that attack these people that are speaking out against him and the shit there, because he's somehow very good at manipulating his people to thinking, like, he's a good guy. And like, but no, just if this continues, he will eventually kill somebody. Well, yeah, he doesn't respect safety words and he doesn't, you know, give people time to evaluate what they're doing. And there's no, and, and I assume he's getting some enjoyment out of this. Of oh, some I'm guaranteed. Well, and it was right? implied that he may have even done something to one of the women when they were unconscious, yes. which is also fucking unsettling. Yes. Like there's so many issues with him and consent. You know, if he sent this contract to people a week in advance and they had a week to review it and they still came and he followed a safety word, I would think that the shit's fucked up. But at that point, you, you've you had time to evaluate this this 40 page contract. You're you're using a safety word. It's listened to, you know, you're you're choosing to be in that situation. Not that I think what he does is right, but we're all adults and we can make adult decisions. But the fact that he doesn't really give true consent right off the bat there, I was like, this is this is the issue. Yeah. And this is the issue that we continuously see in society. Nothing is wrong with having extreme pleasures or, you know, deviant things that you enjoy as long as everybody's consenting. Exactly. And the consent is maintained. <laughs> like, if you want to go and be tortured and fucking like do all this shit, knock your socks off. Like, good for you. But you should have the right to say no. Yes. Right. And so it was very eye opening to me. And I hope that people evaluate that a little bit more before they go, is that they're not going to be in control and there's going to be consent will not be validated. And that to me is the most important thing. Yep. I hope people see this documentary and actually learn to be careful. Right. Or think about it. If someone's handing you a 40 page contract. Be like, to sign email in that, that minute. Shit to me ahead of time. Yeah, like I'd be like, and I'm out. But you're there. You don't. And we're also, you know, someone like that preys on. Well, you don't want to be rude. You don't want to make someone uncomfortable. And I'm gonna tell everyone right now, it's okay to make people feel fucking uncomfortable. It's okay to come across as rude. If someone puts you in a situation with a 40 page fucking contract before, without giving you the time to review it, that's fine. I go to a fucking trampoline park. Their contracts on the fucking website. Right. I can go and read it before I go. I know that if I, you know, jump the wrong way or whatever, they're gonna basically wash the hands of my injury. I get it, right? I'm I'm taking the risk of going to the trampoline park, but they're giving me all the time in the world to review that waiver. Right. So that to me, it's and we need to stop being polite as a society, particularly women. And just be like, no, nah, sorry, I need more time to do this. And I don't need to do this right now. It is okay to say no and be rude. It's okay. Your safety exactly. and your health is worth it, right? 
But yeah, it was well made. I'll say for a Hulu, it wasn't as good as the Shutter Docs, but I thought it was pretty decent. Yeah, like I just found it just extremely fascinating and just unnerved me. Would you ever do an extreme haunt? Not obviously his, but one of the other oh, ones. Fuck no. Yeah, not my thing. Not my thing. I do not want to be touched and hurt in any way. No, and I don't want to be yelled at and told I'm a Megan and like I, bet that's I get yelled thing. at enough by you. I'm good. <laughs> oh yeah, I never. I I definitely would never do that to you. That's insane, <laughs> guy. I know. Hey, if you wanted to and you could find someone again that consented to that and wanted to do those things with you, awesome. Right. But like, could you imagine like tied up and had mud dump on you? Like that's just not for me. No, I am not good. for me. No. No, no, no. I'll live my horror movies on the on the TV screen. Yeah, or like, I don't know, like walking around a regular haunt where they just jump out at you is enough for me. Right. That's enough. I don't need people fucking torturing me. But hey, if that's your thing, just make sure you consent and have real consent. But <clears throat> exactly. I I honestly think so. This is that's available on Hulu. Um, I don't think it's available anywhere in Canada, actually. Yeah, um, it's like, oh, yeah, Disney Plus. Find... Disney Plus, probably. Oh, yes. Yeah. Disney Plus is probably since she has Disney only a Pulu. Plus. Yeah. I don't have no Pulu. Pulu. Um, but <clears throat> should you lead with this next one? Yeah. What do you think? Oh, no. Did you cut out? Or did oh, I cut sorry. Out? Somehow I accidentally uh, muted myself. Don't know how I did that. Oh, that is like, uh oh. <laughs> I think it's because I was uh, dealing with Stormy trying to chew on my headphones. Oh, babies. Okay. But yes, I can cover the next one. I was just pulling up the synopsis. Um, so the final movie of our 2023s. It was a long haul for tonight, folks. Um, but, you know, Friday the 13th in October, that's kind of a special thing. Because that doesn't it happen is. very often. It is. And, you know, I went into work. And most of y'all mm. that listen to our show probably seen the video of me <clears throat> dancing around all happy like as a Jason Voorhees. Because, you know, it's Friday the 13th, and everybody in my job knows I'm a freaking horror movie l- lunatic. Um, so, you know, what do you watch on Friday the 13th? Most people go and revisit the classic Friday the 13th franchise. Well, I went and did some uh, uh, Friday the 13th fan films on YouTube that I hadn't seen before. And then later that evening, speaking of fan films, Never Hike Alone to the sequel to the first one and sequel to never hike in the snow uh dropped around 10 p.m on friday the 13th and i was so freaking excited because i loved those movies because they're probably the best fan films that have been done for the friday the 13th franchise and so i watched this as soon as it aired and the synopsis is or actually first it's got a 70 minute runtime uh, and then the synopsis is 20 years after the last sighting of Jason Voorhees Crystal Lake resident and former victim Tommy Jarvis still lives with the haunting notion that Jason will one day return uh yep so we get uh Tom Matthews coming back to reprise his role as Tommy Jar- Tommy Jarvis from part 6 and from Never Hike Alone um has the camper from never hike alone uh has the sheriff from i think friday the 13th part six or part seven uh it's got a few recognizable faces and this was an awesome friday the 13th style sequel jason just going on a fucking rampage and just some really brutal kills Mm -hmm. uh special effects you know, that's really low budget fan film. So, you know, the special effects are good for what they are. Like, really oh, I thought they were fucking are. fabulous for what they were. Better yeah. than the fucking nun, too. <laughs> like, this was. Sorry, Dave. Way better. Yeah, this was. If you are a Friday the 13th fanboy and you have not watched any of the Never Hike Alone movies, watch them in order and be excited for part two because part two delivers the fucking goods of Jason going on a killing spree. And Tommy Jarvis, Tom Matthews playing Tommy Jarvis is always so good to see him back. And he deals with like a trauma of, you know, trauma of a survivor of a slasher franchise, which you don't really see too often. Like, Mm -hmm. and he shows like the effects that it had on him, how it's haunted him his entire life. And like, yeah, this was just all around fucking awesome Friday the 13th movie. I got to see more Jason. Fuck yes. This is in my top 10. I am nothing but good things to say about this film. Um, this film was better than some movies that were released on Shutter this year. This film was better than some VODs that were released this year. Um, this film was fucking great. It was fucking great. Um, 
I, I'm like, I'm looking at the reviews. I'm seeing four stars, four stars, you know, from random people. These are not people that knew the filmmaker. This isn't one of those like indie films where you go on to the, to the letterbox and you know, it's all people that know the filmmaker. Right. Um, no, these are people that literally watched this movie and was like, well, we'll see how it goes. And fuck, this was a good film. It was yeah. a really, really solid, good film. Um, it's in my top ten. I'm going to say I, it right now. It that is. is awesome, because I never figured a Jason Voorhees film would ever be in your top ten. Yeah, this, this to me, is one of the surprises of this year. Um, you know, I thought, I thought Never Hike Alone and Never Hike in the Snow were good. Like, I thought they were enjoyable. Um, but fuck, these are, this was a really fucking good film. Like, it was really good for what it was. It was really well acted for what it was. It was, uh, yeah, there's a lot of praise. A lot of praise for this and it's disturbing. You know, it's, uh, I, I think this is something that a lot of people should talk about, promote. Um, yeah, nothing but good things. Nothing but good things to say. And especially the fact that they're just, since it's a fan film, they're just giving this away for free on Tubi to watch. Or not Tubi, uh, YouTube. Like, it's just there for you to watch willy-nilly, whatever you want. And it's... It's so good. And I think they have a Kickstarter going on where you can, uh, or the Kickstarter has already gone on and went by, but you could, uh, pay to get the Blu-ray and stuff like that. You know, I, I would just donate, to be honest with you. I don't give a really fuck about the Blu-ray. I... I just think that they deserve acknowledgement for a job well done. Like, I just think they really, you know, took a concept and I know they can't call it Friday the 13th, but we all know it's a Friday the 13th film. Um, but it's, it was fucking slow clap, like slow cat clap. I was humbled. I was impressed. You know, this was a, this was a major impressing moment for me this year was this movie. I really thought they brought it for what it was. And again, like, and I know I'm shitting all over The Nun 2, but I don't care. That was a fucking shitty film. And it had no excuse to be as shitty as it was. I'm sorry to the people that liked it. I don't mean to disrespect your opinion. But when I see a movie like this, and I think this is more entertaining, made more sense, and was more enjoyable than this other piece of shit, that's a problem. Um, and who knows? Maybe uh, it's Vincent DeSani? Yes. Uh, yes. V- Vicente uh Vincente DeSante. Hey, let's hope he does other shit in the future. I think he's great. Yeah, because he's the one that did all the Never Hike in the Never Hike movies. So, like, I I fully look forward to see whatever he does in the future. Who knows, right? You got to get your start somewhere. So, good for him. But, yeah, I, I'm i glad you loved it because, yeah, this movie was just fucking awesome. Oh, we will. I will be bringing this up at the end of the year. For sure. For sure. Um, yeah, I was very impressed. So, those are a lot of 2023s. And really, very few duds. Yeah, shockingly enough. Like, even though there may be movies that, like, totally killer, which I'm pretty sure Scott is not going to like as much as I did, and No One Will Save You, which Scott liked a lot more than me, um, and Pet Pet Cemetery Bloodlines, which was just average. Nothing was overly, like, there was a couple that were bad, but out of, like, the 18 million movies we talked about, that's not too bad. Right, yeah, I was going to say, like, it was, but, you know, finally uh, can feel a little better about 2023. Well, I'll be quick with my uh, older watch. I watched The Legend of Hell, Hell House. Yay! Yeah, I finally watched it. So, um, yeah, it, was, it wasn't it was bad. I thought it was really interesting. So, Rowdy McDowell's in this, and um, it was really, really interesting with the psychics going there and, you know, how fucking evil this house is. You've seen it, obviously. Yep, I actually watched this on VHS back at my parents' house. Like uh, when I was like a teenager and then I've read the book that it's based off of by Richard Matheson. And yeah, I it's a little slower nowadays, but it's like a slow yeah. burn. Very much a slow burn, very much a 1970s film. But fuck, I really I really did enjoy it. And I thought it was a really quality movie. So I'm glad I finally got around to watching it. So that was my older one. And then the last thing I'll bring up, unless you have an older watch. Sorry, do you have one? Yep, I do have one. I uh, just didn't get a chance to put it on here. That was but, uh, fine. I'll talk about it quickly, but uh, it is called The Night Eats the World from 2018. Hmm. I think was, I remember uh, that one. Yeah, say so Erica brought this one up and said that I'd probably like it. And it's, uh, yep, after waking up to find himself all alone in an apartment where a massive party was being held the night before, Sam is immediately forced to face a terrifying reality. The living dead have invaded the streets of Paris. And yeah, it's just uh, this guy basically just living alone in this giant apartment complex that he's been able to like clean out, and uh, he just like just basically watching the poor guy go insane as these zombies are all around him, and 
like wanting to find a friend and I was all rooting for him until he implied that he shot a cat because he went insane and was trying to rescue a kitty and then realized the cats and other animals don't attract to zombies and the cat was rubbing up against a zombie's leg so he went nuts and shot the cat or at least implied that and I was like nope I hate this guy now I want him to die <laughs> Ooh, nice I like it so but no, it, there's a sequel movie. to this one too really? I, yeah there's a sequel um, or maybe it's a sequel that's coming. I don't know. I just saw something that meets the world. Oh, maybe it's just a sequel. Like, you know, that thing where they put like eats the world too. Yeah. And I'm hoping that there's going to be a sequel. Yeah. It looks good. It has a really high rating. 87% on Rotten Tomatoes, six out of 10 on IMDb. Um, see why you dug it. Yeah. I'll say it was a very fun zombie movie and like, yeah, it's just like a good character study. So definitely recommend that one. Nice. Very cool. Well, What's new will be quick. No, not much. Just uh, chilling. How about you? <laughs> well, what's new? Hopefully, you'll be coming up with Erica and next time we chat. We can talk yeah. about what we do for the Halloween pre weekend to celebrate your belated birthday. Oh, yeah. Happy birthday, Scott. We haven't recorded. <laughs> <laughs> no shit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank your you. birthday was like three weeks ago, but happy belated birthday. Um, Thank you. I went to the UK, as, as we talked about before, and I did see a haunting in Venice. Um, which was kind of ghosty. Like it was kind of bridging between thrill and horror. I would actually suggest for you and Erica to watch it. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, it moves quick and it's really well done. And uh, Tina Fey's in it. Oh, nice. And uh, she's really interesting in it. Yeah, she's really interesting in it. She plays a really different character. Um, so I went to a UK movie theater and they have very small popcorn sizes compared to the United <laughs> States. I, I sent a picture to Scott and I was you like, You sure did. I'm like, This is their large. He's like, What? Um, and they have Hasbro there. Hasbro is their big candy distributor. So it's all Hasbro. Uh, Haribo. Or Haribo. Is that what it is? Haribo? Yeah, I think it's Haribo. Haribo. And uh, it's all small packages, comparably. Yeah, I know. noticed that too. I'm like, So the big packaging packages down in the States. Yeah, that's right. Mm. Extra large around here. Right. Um, but the movie theater was very cute. It was small. Uh, but I got to see a lot of like British films that we wouldn't necessarily see over here or international films for the previews, um, which was interesting. Uh, I thought that was kind of cool. There's uh, they didn't show any films that were being made over in North America. It was okay. all like British. Um, the one about with the Michael Caine coming out, the Great Escaper. Oh no uh, shit. Probably okay. have, yeah, like it was stuff like that that came out, right? So that was kind of cool. And also, I went on a very disappointing true crime tour. Um, hmm. it was horrible. I left halfway through the tour. So, oh, wow. yeah, it was it was being done in a very busy part of Newcastle. So Newcastle is a fairly populated city. I Matt and Kate probably know this or anyone any listeners we have that are from England. Um, it's a party city. So they decided to have this tour at 7 p.m. on a Friday night. Now, Scott and I did a tour last year around this time in downtown Hamilton, similar time. But this was so bad. The streets were so crowded. We could barely hear the tour guide. There was a guy on our tour that kept like he was I I was like, oh, he's drunk. And then he kept going around the corner and I thought he was smoking a cigarette until I looked over at one point and he was sniffing something off his hand. Oh, this guy was doing a fucking blow on the tour. (laughs) And like we could barely hear the tour guide. And my friend's band was going to be performing at another bar at like nine o'clock. So this tour was supposed to go from 7 to 8.30. So halfway through the tour, I said to my friends, I said, look, this tour fucking sucks. Like, if you guys want to leave, because I was the one that organized it. Like, they take me to do stuff, so I take them to do stuff. We kind of do stuff back and forth. So I had bought these tickets in advance, and I was like, look, like, this sucks. You know, if you guys (laughs) want to leave, we can leave. They're like, yeah, we should leave. So I, I just told the tour guide that we had other engagements, and we left. I have never left a tour. I have been on multiple ghost tours. I have done multiple things. And this was just, I, and it wasn't like the stories were bad. It's just, we could barely hear them because it was so busy and loud. And, and it was just, she wasn't loud enough. And there was too many people on the tour and it was just not, it was like, and then it started raining. Honestly, it was like, you know, a series of unfortunate events. So unfortunately the crime tour was not, as interesting that I, as I thought it would be, but I did enjoy going to the UK movie theater. I did see a haunting in Venice, which I did enjoy. Um, I do like Agatha Christie stuff. I am, I am getting a little bit soft on uh, 
Agatha Christie and enjoying the movies that have come out as of late. So nice. I do recommend A Haunting in Venice for people that kind of like that bridge between thriller, mystery, and horror. It, it has enough in there for everybody. And that's it. That's finally, man, we're back to our old fucking show run times. Almost yeah, two no hours, shit. Scott. Just Holy on movies we watched. We didn't even have any other like large segments. That's crazy. No, thank God, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Because our old asses Thanks. need to get ready for bed. <laughs> well, let's see. How many 20... I, I guess I could count A Haunting in Venice, too, which is available in theaters if anyone's interested or, you know, will be available to rent. So let's see here. How many do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, plus if we add Venice, 22. That's a yeah. lot. Yeah, we fucking did our homework this time. Yeah, so that's it. We're not watching anything else for the rest of the year. Well, we still have to watch Saw 10. Yes, I need to see mm-hmm. Saw 10. Five Nights at Freddy's. Yes. Anything uh, else? I'm sure there's some other ones. I, and, like, the list of ones that you've suggested over time. Um, but, yeah, there's more coming out. I just can't remember off the top of my head. At the oh, moment. Thanksgiving. Yeah, there that's we go. That's the one that was filmed down the street from my house. Yep, And then it's a wonderful knife. <laughs> Oh, it's a, a wonderful knife. Yep, a Christmas that slasher sounds... film. Oh, man, that sounds fun. Yep, I, oh, I, I guess we got to watch The Exorcist Believer. Yeah, well, eh, not excited, yeah. but I'll watch it. Right. Um, the, mean, what it... the mean one, the Grinch movie, finally is available for us. What about The Weight? Have you heard of this? Nope. Oh, okay. Well, there's some. there looks like there's a couple more that are coming. So, though, like though, <laughs> though they are talking about the sequel to Talk to Me coming out 2024, maybe. Um, Night Swim, A Quiet Place, Day One. Oh, my God. How many you know more they... Quiet Place movies are we going to fucking make? Oh, as many as that rakes them in money. Holy shit, man. It will be interesting to see what happens. I hope they make a sequel to Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> Oh, I think they already have, because I think they already revealed that uh, what Tigger is going to look like. What? I think so. Hold on. Where did you see this? I think I even shared it in the chat. Oh, I might have missed it. Oh, I don't see it yet. Oh, man. Oh, I do see it! <laughs> That's fucking funny. <laughs> Tigger looks hilarious. Um, yeah, I was gonna say it looks great. Oh fuck! Winning the blue button, honey, with that fucking mask this year still makes me laugh. Right? Oh shit, that was a good one, man. Well, thank you for sitting through with us, and uh, we will be back again a couple more times before the end of the year. Our schedule is much different now. Scott's life has changed. I was away. Yeah. It's been the a days... busy, busy times. Now we just come with twenty three horror films, and then we leave you for like. A month, and then we'll be back again with 23 horror films. Um, But please check out, you know, there's enough variety here. Please watch them and enjoy. Um, Tell Heather she's wrong about no one will save you. (laughs) I'm fine with you guys liking it. I just felt that you went against our pack. She's attacking us. I only attacked you because you attacked Phil. I was standing up for my brother. I was giving Phil a lovely reach around. As long as Phil is, you know, consenting, <laughs> he didn't oh, give the contract. Just the way he it. talks about my smoky goodness, oh, he's consenting. And I will say, it. I agree with Tim Davis's review. It was a well-made film. It, you know, I get why people would like it. It just... No, you hate it. You hate everybody that likes it. Don't, don't lie. We already know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just like Scott, smoke, smoke show is gaslighting Heather. Now, remember when you said you hated it? You hate everybody that likes it? <laughs> it's like, it's like, you're like, killer butt club. You said you love it. I swear. I'm going to come up with a top 10 that uh, we think I have in my real one. And it's yes. Gonna, um, <laughs> right. But I, I will say no one will save you is better than a lot of other movies that have come out this year. It just, it was not for me, but I get why people like it. Yeah, she hates I, it, guys. She hates us. She hates it. Okay. She hates all of us. We're quitting the podcast. Scott's like, today's the day, finally. <laughs> no more editing. Well, I'm offered to try to I take know. over. And I, like I, I said, it's not that hard now. I just got to squeeze in the time and stop being lazy. Well, you got a lot of shit on, the, on your plate. I know I've had a lot of shit on my plate, too. It's just, it's life, you know? And we've yeah. been doing 
this for going on oh my three years three years now right no four we've been friends we'll be friends for four years or actually we are friends we had our friend anniversary in october for four years so yeah so like did, we, we started, started in january of 2020 so this will be oh, going up to yeah so it would be four years yeah so we've been wow. <laughs> i know you guys have been listening to our asses talk about horror movies that's why we do new releases, because we're not good like Tim and Daniel that can go back and do this battleship between Michael Myers and Jason. We'd be like, I don't know, fucking wins. Who gives a shit? <laughs> right. well, we're just like, you're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> I don't even know if we could debate something like that. Because no. neither one of us are strong enough. Like, well, you're a Jason fan, but I wouldn't say you're a fan boy of the Friday the 13th series. Yeah. Like, I would say you like the franchise and you yeah. like the character, but I couldn't see you being like, oh, man, no, nah. like, like, I don't know if we would be able to, like, n- you know, debate the kills and the and the masks and the like, would you even remember what a Friday 13th mask looked like if I said to you, what does the mask look like in part six? Would you remember? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I'll see. Like, there you go. I would be like, well, I don't know. Fucking a mask. <laughs> I got it. I, I, well, plus, because I'm looking right at all the Friday the 13th masks I have in my collection over here. That helps. <clears throat> yep. <laughs> that is definitely helpful. You know, but we should the come hockey up with mask the with the blue chevrons. That's Halloween 5. See, I remember that because that's how you differentiated the real Jason to the fake Jason, right? Exactly. Yeah. I just saw the documentary that's why i knew that one um but maybe we'll have a versus at some point i'll have to think of something creative yeah i was like tim davis tim davis did love our quicksand versus outback one (laughs) that was funny (laughs) two shitty people like i like stuff like that absolutely shitty stupid stuff yeah that we're like no one really cares who wins or loses exactly no i'm generally i don't really care that wins or loses. we take it seriously enough enough but I am excited to see what our top 10 is. I do think it will be different this year. It usually I think is. it'll be very different. No, sometimes we have, like, common ones. I don't know if we're going to have a lot of common ones this year. No, probably not. I was going to say, because last year I had a lot of uh, uh, theatrical releases, and you really didn't. <clears throat> no, I didn't. Yeah, I thought the theatrical releases were really weak last year. And I was like, I love them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you were a really big fan last year. That's true. Well, we'll have to do that come January. Damn right. Our I'll say and I'm making progress. I am now at 117 2023s, so I'm getting oh, there. Oh, very nice. I'm at 165. Um, yeah, there's no way I'm catching up to you. <laughs> well, it's not really a competition anymore, no. to be honest with you. Like, we watch what we watch, and, you know, if I watch another 10 movies by the end of the year, that's great. I will definitely watch some of the ones you recommended that I that I skipped over. Yeah, um, same. Right? But uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. In the meantime, we're proud to be part of the Legion Podcast Network. Thank you to Legion for your continuous support under the Kill the Cast feed. As you all know, Legion has a Patreon uh, where you can go on to listen to bonus shows, get, you know, promo codes and stuff like that. And, you know, we're going back to 1996. You know, I've showed up at Scott's house. I don't know. There's some dead fish in his trunk he's i've said i don't know what we're gonna do and scott went into a big rant right now of how he's watching our every move and he has one thing to ask you what are you (laughs) waiting for i hope you're not waiting for me to edit this episode because it's gonna take me a while what are you waiting for what are you waiting for we didn't even talk about us we didn't even talk about it being Halloween because you might be listening to this in 2024 and be confused which year we're talking about. So um, it is close to Halloween. We have enjoyed spooky season. Um, and yeah, hopefully we'll enjoy spooky season this weekend when Scott comes up and we'll talk about, you'll hear us talk about that in January. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 Scott is that episode. Uh, but thank you as always for listening. We do appreciate your support. Um, a big shout out to Dave Bailey as always, since we've razzed him so much. Um, thanks, Dave, for your support. You can listen to him and Android Virus at the Cemetery Gates podcast. Excellent podcasters. Dave is definitely smarter than me, probably on par with Scott. <laughs> Oh, Matt he's smarter Wood. than me too. Hundred percent. Matt, Wood, Matt Wood and Kate Pollock from the Internal Spotless Dark <laughs> Eternal Darkness of the Not So Spotless Mind podcast. Thank God for you, Tim Davis and Daniel Luffy from the Dummies of Horror podcast. Rob Humphreys from 
uh, Slasher Radio. And Lance Lanford, we didn't talk about it all today, but Lance, thank you for being a friend we from the whole Lance. insurance podcast. And Dave C., of course, from the Exploding Heads podcast, and Christian as well. And then we got to give love to Phil Ray since we brought him up quite a bit today. Oh, Phil Ray. And like Jason, oh my gosh. Jason Gray? Thank you. Fuck, I don't know what I'd do without you. I'd be like, Jason! <laughs> Jason, you're my friend. Um, thank you to their never any support and Craig Wooten as well. Um, yeah, you guys are awesome. You make the page a lot of fun. So thanks for being fun. Yeah, and thanks for putting up with our crazy opinions. And Dave, if you ever want to come on this show, Dave Bailey, you absolutely can, but I absolutely insist that Roxy is on there as well. Absolutely, um, 100%. Like, unless Roxy is in, in camera view the entire time, I'm not interested. Um, that Great Dane is fucking adorable. Yeah. Like, Great Danes in general are fucking adorable. They're like little oh, horses. They are. Yeah, they absolutely are. Just walking around doing their Great Dane things. So, um, do you have anything else to say to the good people, Scotty? Yep. Until next time, everybody, you know, enjoy what's left of spoopy season. Grab <laughs> your ice, chocolate, mocha, latte, pumpkin spice, crack, and uh, snort it or smoke it or drink it or inject it or whatever you do with the pumpkin spice. Uh, just remember, the spice is nice. Keep those pumpkins warm in your ass. Make sure they're nice and looped <laughs> up and spin around a few times and scream, Happy Halloween! Because by, by the time we record again, I think Halloween will be beyond us. So, Happy Halloween to everybody. Enjoy what's left of spoopy season. We love ya. And until next time, kitties, unpleasant dreams. See you.